Hey, good afternoon, Saints. This is Wayne again in the Volkswagen Tabernacle. This is episode four on Deliverance Chronicles TV. And today's topic is, it's in a question form. Is there any such thing as generational sin? And I'm going to answer that for you. Uh, the very fact that we need a savior is a sign that generational sins exist. We know in Genesis that Adam and Eve transgressed. Let me just digress for a moment. No, they did not eat a fruit. The apple is not mentioned anywhere and neither is a snake. Okay, let me get back to the topic. So because of their transgressions, we are all born with a broken relationship from God. We are not in perfect unity with him. That's the number one reason or example of generational sin. And also in the gospels, when the disciples with Jesus encountered a blind man, the first thing they asked him was, Lord, who sinned? Was it the mother or the father? And he said, neither. This was so that God would be glorified. So he's admitting tacitly saying that generational sins do exist and the consequences of the generational sins does fall on the children. I think the prime example of generational sin, iniquity or uh, family iniquity is in Exodus 20 and 5. And this is known as the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments where God said that he would visit the sins of the forefathers on the children for four to five generations. But for those who love him, uh, up to a thousand generations will he bless them. So the topic today is what are the consequences of generational sin? From my experience, parentage by simply in the name of Jesus, I repent for the sins of my forefathers. Lord, I ask that you forgive them for the iniquity towards you. And from this point on, I break every curse that is being administered by a demon in this area. We have to understand that demons must have the legal right. The kingdom of God has legalities. And we operate in the kingdom construct whether we know it or not. And the enemy must have the legal right to do things in believers and unbelievers alike. This is why us as parents have to be careful of what we do, that we are not inhibiting the progress of our children through sin. And again, in Western theology, in Christendom in the United States and the West, we are not taught these things that we have the ability and have the right for those of us who are in Jesus to halt the progression of generational sin. Because your mother's a diabetic doesn't mean that you have to be a diabetic. These things are not in our DNA as we've been taught, but they have spiritual composition. Because your father was an alcoholic, you don't have to be an alcoholic. Alcoholism is not a disease, it's a demon. Because you've only, your parents have only, uh, were only able to be XYZ successful. That doesn't mean that you have to replicate their success. We have to understand that we are seated in a heavenly place in Christ Jesus. And because of this uh, relationship with Christ, we have access to the legalities of the kingdom. We have access to the legal system of the kingdom. When the enemy goes before God as the accuser of the brethren or the anti dikos which means prosecutor, the Bible says in Colossians that there's handwriting ordinances that are against us, that he stands before God and he accuses us. Well, I'm here to tell you today that you can make an appearance in the courts of the heavens and plead your case. And in the case in Luke 18, where it talks about uh, the righteous judge and, and God being the righteous judge, just like as an earthly judge would hear uh, petitions and not being and not wanting to be worn out, that he would rule on the woman's behalf. 
so does God rule on our behalf. The prosecutor is Satan, the enemy, and the intermediary between God and man, or our attorney, is Jesus. Christ Jesus, the man who has authority in the heavens because he's divine, and authority on earth because he was born in human flesh, is the one that stands in the court making intercessions for us. Now, in these intercessions, as we plead our case, the plea is always the blood of Jesus. The blood will cancel these curses in our generations. Generations to come that we will never see and generations that exist on the earth now. All you have to do is break the curse, cancel the sin, repent of your lineage, and God through his power will guide you on how to break what has been happening for millennia. I remember doing a deliverance and the demon said for 800 years he has been in this family and he has never been opposed and never been discovered. How, for how many of us that is the case that these dem demons have not been discovered or not been opposed spiritually? This is something that we need to think about. Now, if you want to know what is operational in your life, all you have to do is pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the generational curses and the demons that are working against you, and He will. This is Wayne again, VW Tabernacle, Deliverance Chronicles TV, and come on, folks, let's step up and stop the enemy from operating in our lives. Let's not have the enemy run us Let's run the enemy. God has given us the authority to do so. God bless y'all. Have a good evening. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post. If you need help uh, in your own deliverance and some issues that you're having in your body or in your, your soul, just message us and let us know. We are more than happy to help you along the way. God bless you all. Have a good evening. Wayne signing off. Oh, remember, we are on the winning side.